episode, music superstar Dustin Lynch stops by. Hey everybody, this is Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 263 of the Ask Gary V Show. And this is gonna be exciting. First of all, before we even uh, introduce you uh, and say hello to the Vayner Nation, I wanna personally say that just the love and vibe that you and your camp have given me personally, just like, th- and through our team and communication is humbling and I'm super thankful and I feel amazing about it, so thank you, my man. Oh, and, thank uh, you. and congratulations on all your success. I know thank it's you. an incredibly awesome week and a lot of new stuff ahead and we'll get into that in a minute. And for everybody watching, are we getting the numbers from Facebook? Everybody watching on Facebook, start putting in your phone number. This is a call-in show, Ask Gary V. And, uh, and I think you're gonna be very compelled to uh, call in on this episode. And so for the Vayner Nation who doesn't know who you are, who are you, what are you about, what's going on? What's up Vayner Nation, I'm Dustin Lynch. Um, I'm, a sing- I'm a singer, I guess, <laughs> some kind of way. I, I've, I've uh, accomplished and, and been chasing this dream of singing country music. And uh, I don't even say, I just sing music, how about that? We're not even gonna label it country music. Um, wear a cowboy hat most of the time, which is why it's sitting on the table. Um, Did you feel compelled to not wear it in New York? You know, no, it, 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 it well, on the streets, yeah, because you get, it turns too many heads. It does, right? It turns way too many heads God in New York. New Yorkers. Yeah. <laughs> We're the so worst. I, I like carry it, you know, in the yeah, streets. I get the or whatever, yep. on camera, I'll put it on. But um, yeah, sing country music, uh, living a dream, man, working hard, and uh, trying to conquer the world. And Dustin, let's take it all the way back. So, so many of the people watching here, um, you know, obviously I've done, because of Mike Boyd and other, like I've done so much of music, you know, a lot with, you know, hip hop artists, but others as well. So many people have the dream of being a performing artist in music. Like, it almost feels like, I, I, I don't know, I feel like at age eight, one in every three or four people is literally living that dream in their mind. How early did this enter into your mindset? And, and how did that even happen? I mean, it, it came like, and this is, I'm not saying this to be funny. Um, I, I, I wanted to be a garbage man. I wanted to be a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. And then this guy Garth Brooks came along. Yeah. And yeah. Garth Brooks was like freaking Superman to me. But and you're so, a young dude. Like, how old are you? 32. So you were, I mean, I remember that pretty, I, I, was, I remember that pretty vividly. You yeah. were real young when that happened. I was five. Happened. Yeah, makes sense. And uh, man, got a cowboy hat, started dressing up like Where him. did you live? I grew up in Middle Tennessee, about an hour south of Nashville. An hour south of Nashville, yeah. okay. You know yeah. Vayner Media has a Chattanooga, Tennessee I office? I do, yes, yeah. absolutely, which is uh, right down the street. I yeah. love it. Okay, so obviously it hit hard there. In that it did, zone, yeah. Right? And, and you know, from then on, it was like, who is this guy? Selling out stadiums, taking yeah, over all of media. Just, he was, I mean, it just exploded. You know, he hit in 89 with a couple of our artists, and, uh, but he's the one that kind of took country international. Yeah, just real quick, because I, I have a good sense of my audience. It's hard for a lot of you to understand how big of an impact this was. He was such a pop culture phenomenon coming from country, which had been plenty around forever sure. and things of that nature, but it was absolutely the crossover moment in a way that's different than Taylor Swift and other things because country was so positioned in a certain way. You never see anybody in New York City wearing a Garth Brooks t-shirt and then overnight a lot of people in New York City and every other part of the world were. So that completely swept you up. Yeah, And And you looked at your parents and said, I'm gonna be that. That's it, and there were just other moments that, that hit me and I was like, man, I, I need to do this. I need to do this. And, and that's really, that need and that what if never left. So had you sung in any shape or form prior to seeing Garth Brooks? Uh, no, no, it, it, I started, um, you know, way back in the day, it started with church choir and, yeah. then, and then it became, do you want to try out for chorus in yes. middle school, you know, yes. sixth grade. Yes, um, how did that work out? I, 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 I didn't try out. I freaked out and didn't go. Is that right? And believe it or not, later in the afternoon, it was bothering me so much. I ran out of like a pep rally in the gym and the teacher, Miss Martin, was still in her office and I was like, I've got to try out and tried out and she uh, she let me in. So should we basically understand that Miss Martin is responsible for all the successes that <laughs> yeah, you've yeah, achieved? Because if she would have said, go screw yourself, you, you blew it. 
maybe you would have been discouraged and it would have never happened. I mean, Miss Martin is a key player in this Big narrative. Big player, and I will say this too. Miss Baldwin, Uh-oh. My, my freshman high school <laughs> vocal teacher, gave me my only C in my academic career. She gave me a C, freshman music, and uh, that made me, it really pissed me off. Yeah. Um, and so, so we're I, mad at Miss Baldwin. I was mad at Miss Baldwin. What's up, Miss Baldwin? And uh, and so I didn't try out for high school chorus. I went and started a band. Interesting. I went and started a band with a couple of buddies. It was a rock band. And, and how did that uh, go? We we're in love with Incubus. Still my favorite <laughs> band today. Yeah. Amazing. And uh, it went great. Yeah. All you learned of a, a sudden, lot. All of a sudden, insecure freshmen were all dating like juniors and seniors, which doesn't really happen in high school, right? Yeah. So it worked good. <laughs> yeah, well, you have a good face too. That probably helped. Um, and, and so and so. Miss Baldwin, do you feel that you would have made that jump had you not gotten that negative feedback or do you think you would have stayed the course? What's your intuition tell you? I would have stayed. Interesting. Yeah, I would have, I would have stayed in course and just done the show choir thing and, and I don't know if... You're not sure how it would have worked out? I'm not sure, no. Have, has Miss Baldwin come to a concert? She has not. Can we, no. can, guys, can somebody, do we know Miss Baldwin? Her? Can we find Miss Baldwin? I don't know, yeah. Well, she doesn't teach there anymore. But. Right, and where is this again? Which exact city? Tell we're going to find her right Tullahoma now. Dude, school. I'm just telling you right now, we're going to find Miss Baldwin. <laughs> where is it again? Tullahoma. Tullahoma High School. Guys, please find Miss Baldwin, like now, by the way. This is the internet age. Hopefully, Miss Baldwin, by the way, you should be probably calling in. You should be seeing this probably in about 15 minutes because I trust the Vayner Nation. So when you do, <laughs> if you're watching the recording, please call us. All right, so then what happens? So then, uh, man, we start making music. We start writing songs. And I, and I realize how, how addicting that process was. You, know, um, you found a way to communicate? Yeah, covering music's cool. Sure. But writing a song um, you know, about a girl I wanted in high school or yes. a heartbreak or whatever... And then, this is way back when there were cassettes. Yes, I was recording on, on just a simple thing my mom had. Go out in the car and plug it in and to hear it back was like, holy crap, dude, yeah. this is awesome. Do you have any of that stuff? Uh, yes, yeah. I'm sure my mom still, she keeps everything. So You should ser- you and your team should seriously consider digging that up and using that for social media content. That would be, inc- you wanna talk about real thurs- throwback Thursday content? It's your, bad, though. I know. Why, but, <laughs> it's but, honest, man. <laughs> but that's why it's so good. Yeah, yeah, Right? Yeah. Because you want to talk about inspiring somebody. Like, like when people go back and watch the first episode of Wine Library TV, my first video on the internet, it's the piece that makes them believe. Because they're like, wait a minute, if he was like that and that's right. what it turned into, like, and I, you know, I have a funny feeling your stuff was pretty interesting early on. Like everybody sure. says, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so how long did the band stay, stay together? We stayed together, well, until uh, we all went to college and, and went to separate colleges. Um, one guy became a lawyer, one guy's an architect, the other's a teacher. And, so they all um, hate you? No, not at all, <laughs> no. No, they don't. No, they're very supportive. But um, I, I went and I actually Do they went. take full credit for your career? They're like, remember when I taught you this? Well, you know, it'll still come out and we'll get, we'll get, like, uh, we'll get one or two of the guys up, you know, mm-hmm. just on a jam session every now and again once Love we get enough, enough in us, enough, enough cocktails in us. So before we get into the, into the calls, give me the quick version of the narrative of how the career really took off or started or what, what's kind of the punchline? Man, I was, you know, I was, I didn't have anybody in Nashville to hold my hand. I didn't have a family member that was in the music industry. So I, I literally just jumped in and had no freaking clue what to do. Do you feel like potentially that was an advantage? I think it's an it, it interesting a huge, question. It was a huge advantage um, because there's music schools. There's Middle Tennessee State yep. and there's Belmont. And those are the two music schools around Nashville. Okay. And the reason I think I had an advantage is because I wasn't on that path that path. I wasn't rising with everyone else. I was over here trying to figure out how the hell to get in a honky tonk or play the frat party down the street and, and learning how to entertain. Yeah. I wasn't reading a book about how to entertain. I was having to, I was having to entertain. And, uh, so I I do think it gave me an advantage. Does that in the current rock star nation of entrepreneurship and maybe even like some of the stuff that made you aware of myself, like, does that make you, uh, simpatico to entrepreneurs that are doing versus going to school to figure it out? Absolutely, yeah. I think, um, and, and honestly, it's a, it's a quicker path, too, to figure out if you love it or not. Doing music is not glamorous, man. It's a grind. Yeah. You know, I mean, for years, um, you know, it, I, I said, you know, I was trying to figure out how to play the frat party, right? And yep. so I started getting into that, and then it was, 
how do I afford a trailer to pull musical equip- equipment that I can't afford? Right. So I had to figure all of that out. I had, to, you know, weird side jobs and day jobs. That finally, I got to buy speakers that I could set up to play through and, and all do, that. Do stuff. you think the grind to even get on the stage allowed you to then deal with the feedback on stage? That because it was so hard to even get there and all the no's to even get to the point where you're singing that the people that are at the bar who don't give a crap right. about, you know, it's so funny to me when I speak and like for me, the, the only place where I can't completely captivate attention is open bar late and like the speakers suck and like nobody's listening to you. Right. And a lot of times the people that are organizing come up to me and like, oh, sorry, da-da, you know, and I never care because I'm like, getting to this point was so much harder than four people in the back yelling and being drunk. Right. Did that, do you think that helped you, the grind to even get on the stage helped you when you would not get positive feedback Absolutely. from the audience? Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. Yeah, I mean, you turn all the, all, you turn all the non-believers into believers. That's, that's what playing a bar gig in Nashville, Tennessee, there's 100 honky-tonks, 24-7 have bands. And um, why, why, if I'm a why tourist, you? why if I'm a tourist am I gonna stay and watch this punk? and not go next door, right? You have to figure out why, and then you have to hold them and hold their attention for hours. And we play a four hour set, no pee break. And <laughs> yeah, and just play for tips. And, and years of that, um, you know, now when I step, on, not, not yeah, to now when the I step on stage, I know ex- exactly, exactly, <laughs> yeah. tell me how to hold it. Uh, but now when I step on stage, it's like I take, I take you know, years of that experience. And now, of course, it's just, it, it's just natural, it's easy. When was the moment, not that you made it, but when was the moment, like, when you're hungry, it's hard to think about making it. But when was the moment where you're like, okay, this is something's about to happen or something just happened? Do you have that kind of moment in your career? I have that kind of moment. Um, I was working, I went to school and I promised mom and dad I graduated. I, I got a pre med degree. Mm-hmm. And so I've got that going on in my head like, man, I could go chase medicine. Did you like it? I loved learning about the human body, I loved it. But it was the what if. What if, what if, I can't live with the what if. If I win the lottery tomorrow, what are you gonna do? And, my, and, and I, I play this game um, with my roommates and they're like, oh, we're gonna go to Vegas. <laughs> and, you know, and this and that. And I was like, well, I'm gonna go to Lower Broadway and play my shift at second fiddle, right? I mean, um, so when, when that was my answer, it was like, I need, to, I need to give this a shot. With all the money in the world, whatever, sure. I'm still gonna go play this honky tonk bar. Like, so um, that was kind of the moment of, okay, we're chasing this. And then whenever I, I, I finally started seeing things happening, it was about find, finding people that believe in what you are and what you have to offer. And um, there's a few key moments where, hey, you have potential to, oh my God, you're, I want you. This, this whole, you're mine. You know, and, and um, my manager is one of those believers. Um, and an, another gentleman that, that runs my record label now was, was a huge believer as well. Uh, three years of taking meetings and, hey, this is me. Here's a song. It's like, yeah, I keep trying. You know, no thanks. And I get, that gets frustrating. But, you know, what I've learned over time is the criticism and, and the no's are for a reason, right? And, and they push me to get better. And, and it, it's how do you about, how do you interact? I apologize. How do you interact when you come across somebody who gave you a no? Now, like, how does that play out for you? Um, do it, you like to make a joke? Do you like like how how do you roll in that? I mean, because that's real. I've be, I've got a yeah. It's, it still is absolutely uh-huh. yeah. Um, still to this day in my career, um, I've learned to to step back and go why? What can I do to change this this thumbs down into an up? Yep. Um, and of course, it's at different levels now, um, you know. And but still, we we all want to get nominated for every freaking award, right? Mm-hmm. We all want the biggest song on earth. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, well, shoot, why do I only have the fourth best selling song right now? Mm-hmm. What's what's up with one, two, and three? Why can't mm-hmm. I break mm-hmm. from you know? It's so funny to talk about this, but why can't you break from the number two song on the iTunes chart to one? You know, what what takes us from twenty thousand downloads a week to a hundred? And so figuring that out is, is fun. It's a challenge. Very cool. Andy, you going to get some uh, calls? And while Andy gets our first call in here, what, you know, at a macro, yeah. less about your journey, which I think a lot of people would appreciate, because I want people to be educated, like what's, in tra- I'm actually asking for myself, what's kind of the current state of the way you think about country, country pop? Like what's kind of, what's interesting for a lot of viewers who may be less familiar with it on like what would you give as the three to four sentence state of the union of the space? <laughs> It's changing daily, right? Yeah, it feels like it. Um, you know, the, all the streaming services have allowed country music 
to become popular music. All you over feel the world. that the the lack of gatekeepers has created a bigger, wider audience. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. It's so exciting because I, you know, I I had my Makes start sense. five years ago, and five years ago we didn't have the streaming. We didn't have the reach now that we have all over the globally, all over the world, and, and also we couldn't track where there were fans. You know, we couldn't track people listening to my stuff in Brazil of all places, never been, but we've got fans there and now it's really cool to see. Is there any weird, is there any spot or country or is Brazil the one where you're, where you're like, wait a minute, this data, we need to go down there and play a show. Um, have you gotten to that point yet or per- not yet? Yeah, not yet there because um, I've started asking around and, mm-hmm. and there's, it's so, each market across the world, it's it's kind of different on how you get into that scene. Understood. It's, it's um, the Philippines is very intriguing to me. Okay. Um, I, I really want to try and chase that because well, no a, one has yet. I have a yet. great strategy. Let's get Manny Pacquiao to drop a hook in your song and you're set. There you go, dude. Number one for life. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's our angle. <laughs> <laughs> but that's interesting because you see the data there. See the data there. You know, fastest growing from a, country from a in the fa- world that's Facebook English speaking. From a, from a Spotify standpoint? Uh, from a Facebook, yeah. And I think everybody's doing well in the Philippines on Facebook, though. Let's be careful about yeah, that. I mean that, true. right? It's true. <laughs> uh, but... And so, got it. You got it? Ready to go? Let's do it. Who's this? Eric. Eric? May or may not be on the line. Okay, let's see. Eric? Hey, Gary. How's it going, man? I'm doing really well. How are you? Man, I am fantastic. It is so good to uh, get through to you guys. This is amazing. Well, say hello to Dustin, and and where are you calling from? I'm calling from uh, Sarnia, Ontario, Canada. Just near Detroit there, actually. How's your data in Ontario? Oh, it's, it's booming. <laughs> I love it's Canada. So, it's, it's so expensive. That's what it is. <laughs> so what, what can we help you with? What, what can we answer for you? Yeah, no, well, I've been, Gary, I've been following your show uh, for a while now. I love kind of, uh, you know, everything you talk about. And uh, and so I'm an I'm a independent artist out of Canada. Um, I actually, Tess and I, actually, we, we met briefly uh, when you were playing in Hamilton, Ontario, there with uh, Chris Lane in Florida Georgia Line. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. So I, we, yeah, and uh, so I, I just came across it on Facebook, and I was like, oh, I gotta, I gotta message you guys. But awesome, um, thank you. Quick question for a couple, couple questions for Dustin there and Gary. It'd be great to have your opinion on sure. it. Sure. Uh, first of all, the I'm, I'm a big fan of like the eighty twenty rule. You know, like what twenty percent of what you're doing, you know, are, is getting eighty percent of your results. And as a, a big artist like yourself, Dustin, I was wondering, you know, in looking back on your career, um, what I, what would you say would be the twenty percent of the things you guys went after that achieved maybe eighty percent of you know your success? You know, it's really interesting. D Rock is head is falling off his body right now because today's Daily V is all about like kind of what matters. Yeah. And the first question, <laughs> serendipitous. Literally, as I walked in, your D Rock's like, "Hey, can you ask him like what matters?" I'm like, "Whatever, fucking D Rock." You know, like <laughs> let me do my let me do my thing. But so for like like it's just funny how the universe works. I mean, basically, in essence, the question here is like, what are those couple things that mattered? That mattered, um, and as of like currently or coming up. Well, I don't know. What do you think? Like, what were the things that really kind of, when he looks back, were the twenty percent of things that he did that really drove eighty percent of the results? Right. Yes. Yeah. I will say this, um, and and this it's finding the balance of being a cover artist or your own artist. You know, and 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 really how I found that was because it's two different worlds, right? I mean, you can make a great living being a cover band. So figuring out, do you do I want to do covers and play corporate shows and weddings? awesome pays great or do I have something to say as a songwriter and for me I had something to say and so my songwriting and was it seductive to what what, did you see like a path of like oh you can get tricked into this because people know the songs I've got a good voice and away we go absolutely I see there's that gratification of holy crap I'm rocking this crowd it's like you know Jason Aldean's rocking the crowd you're just singing the song you know interesting one thing thing that I want to tell my audience what was interesting, what went through my brain just now is it's the biggest point I make. <laughs> it's funny to have Dunk here. It's like we've, we've had this conversation once or twice. I always try to convince the people, and this is not about Dunk, just to clarify it, especially where I'm about to go. A lot of the things that people do to make a quick buck and the cheap score mm-hmm. and to make dollars are really in essence the same exact talent that you can make the big dollars and the big impact It's just that you weren't willing to be patient and you needed instant gratification, so you cut the corners and you left so much business and so much legacy and so much awesome on the table because you needed a Ferrari. Right. I don't need a Ferrari. 
I know that. <laughs> yeah, so new, I would, new headband. I, I, would, I, mean, I would say. Uh, yeah. I like it. I like it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, so, I so go ahead. That mental decision. That decision. What about of, a little bit more tactical, right? Because now a lot of people are watching. They're like, cool, I made that decision. What about a black and white thing that you say, wow, that action brought me a lot more ROI? Like, was it just playing? Like playing for free. One thing I'm fascinated was, about playing for free. Like a lot of people who have no career think they're fancy and aren't willing to play for free when they don't realize the exposure to 13 people is more valuable than they're playing at that point in their career. It was this. It was. It was. I realized. Stop blaming something else. Why you know write the hit songs. Do you know go go win. You know why why aren't you getting meetings with this label? Well. There's a reason. And so that's really what it was. It was, it was f- figuring out that, hey, these frat, these frat stars and, you know, and who are else on college campus are going to rock out because it's their party and they have to, but it's a different world. And, and it was just realizing that stop, stop blaming, you know, right. everyone it's, else. Every, start, it's your you fault. Say, they, yeah, go ahead. Stop blaming the market. Right, I mean, the market I mean, always knows. The market always knows, and and that's really what it was, and and it, and that's why it took. You know, it, it, I'm literally a ten ten year grind to get a door Overnight to open. Overnight success, right? Um, to get a door to open, to get the right door to open. It took ten years. While while I'm, I feel like I'm fresh from my vacation. I'm gonna I'm gonna say something else that I think a lot of people need to hear. We're talking about the market being right. You're more than welcome not to conform to what you see the market is responding to. As a matter of fact. It's your strength not to, because what the market likes right now is always different than what the market's about to like. Uh, and I think that a lot of people, when they hear from an artistic standpoint, whether singing or art or literature, they're like, well, I don't wanna be commercial or, or I don't wanna give up my principles or things I believe in just sure. to make it. You're more than welcome to do that. Absolutely. What you need to understand, and by the way, I did this. It was not cool to curse on stage when you're a businessman. It was not cool to not wear a suit. And it was not cool to be not a good student. Like I did all the wrong things yeah. other than who the hell knew that 20 years later that's what a lot of entrepreneurs would look like. Right. And so, but that worked out for me. It may not work out for you. I just get mad at people that are mad at the market. Like everybody's so dumb. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and really, uh, from a songwriting point, man, you know, the songs that are on the radio right now are two, three years old, and that's what's yeah. tough about music. You know, is is but that's where the radio too is. That why you're excited that the not that you're mad at the radio. It's still a very important part, but it <clears throat> must be nice to have whether it's streaming or whether vlogs putting music in songs or whatever it may be. It's just nice that you know not thirteen to twenty nine people now control shit. Right. It's it's wonderful. <laughs> yes, I'm and sure. That, that instant gratification and and um, you know just being able to even even when it comes to show you know our live shows um, you know is. Uh, is having having socials now and that feedback. You know, I can get it's on huge. thirty minutes after our show that's right. and go, okay, that moment tonight, when I whenever I did this, whenever I said that, that's what made people get their phone out and post. When I speak and I go directly to the airport, now I'm even busier than ever. But for about five or six years, every time I gave a speech and was going to the airport, I would reply to every single person that talked about that keynote on Twitter. That depth, first of all, you talked about the most important part, the insight. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's getting people to react. This I, I actually genuinely believe that is the most important part, even more than the thing I'm in love with, which is the engagement to deepen that relationship. Uh, they both really, really, really matter, obviously. Yeah, Eric, thanks sure. so much for calling, man. Thank you, guys. All right, let's get to the next call. So how did you first come across my stuff? What like how did we get here? Oh gosh, um, you just kept trolling me online. <laughs> <laughs> you better not land. We'll uh, cook you, know you to death. I, no, straight up, I found you. Uh, this is going to sound weird, but I was jumping in. I'm like, man, I'm gonna. I'm about to take a long shower. I want to listen to a podcast, and I found you just randomly. No kidding, absolutely. Just like one of the podcasts and I, in the I iTunes store, it in or and uh, and I was like. This guy rules because you're. I think you're just on some awesome rant, cussing this and cussing that. I'm like, this is awesome. So uh, yeah, we met and in the shower. Awesome. I love it. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited about that. I bet you a bunch of people are jealous of me. Who's this? Kelly. 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 Hello. Hey, Kelly. You're on the Ask Gary V Show with Gary and Dustin. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me right now? I am not joking. 
I was just looking at my phone and saw that I had a New York call and decided to pick it up. I usually don't answer numbers I don't know. <laughs> well, listen, you put your phone number into Facebook, so you must have assumed maybe this could happen. <laughs> I say that again, I'm sorry. No worries. I, I'm saying you did put your phone number on the internet, so I'm sure you assumed there was a chance this was gonna happen. I did, and now I'm watching you live and hear myself, so I'm kind of freaking out a little bit. All right, bit. turn that down. <laughs> this is classic radio. Turn the radio, turn that down, and, uh, and fire away with your question. I was asking Dustin, first of all, it's nice to meet you. Um, I met you when you came through your wedding a, a couple years ago. Um, oh, great. My question is, how do you feel like seeing and being an artist, like performing? Does it compare to being an entrepreneur for you? And if so, how? Oh, my gosh, yes. Because, you know, in my world, we're, we're uh, it's all about paving your own path. I mean, there's no there's no raise, there's no boss to go, "Hey, I'm going to put you in this position. It's all me." Um every everything that, you know, we do musically, everything we do social-wise and and you know, my world really has changed and it's been really cool to see other acts follow now, you know, is is creating compelling content to make people that don't know who we are or are like on the fence, should we go to that show to make them go, "Holy shit, I've got to go see this show." And so that's really, um, and it's forever changing. Like, how am I going to, how am I going to stay on top? You know, how am I going to continue to push my celebrity star up, up the ranks? Um, and, and then on top of that, you know, back to the music, how am I going to become a better entertainer, a better songwriter? Um, so yes, it's absolutely all about entrepreneurship every, every single bit. Do Do you still get to make a lot of your own decisions now that you have a solid team behind you? You know what's great about having a little success is I get more and more, more and more say now, um, <laughs> and, you know, in this world. It, and um, it's it's we're on a great little streak right now. And, and I'm not my, my team's always been great. And I, I have a great team that I rely on, you know, all, everyone's opinion. But more I ha- have, you know, artistically now I have a lot more leeway to kind of create um, musically and, you know, production wise and so it's 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 a lot more fun but you know with that comes a lot more weight on my shoulders because now I can't screw up <laughs> now you have the responsibility to own your shit <laughs> absolutely no doubt thank you so much for calling I love it thank you guys we do appreciate your time thanks no Kelly see ya you know it, it's interesting um what is a complete non-debatable thing? What is the thing that you like that the team has now either learned or you're starting to learn about yourself that like you know how like D-Rock always tries like you know how I, mad I get at him sure. as I mentioned earlier? Yeah. Like I don't want to hear it. Like I don't want to be produced. <laughs> I'm going to live my life. This is documenting, not creating, and it's hard. And, and today's the first day of like the new season. We're like trying to make it more YouTubey, and so D-Rock's struggling mentally right now. But I'm just not willing to waver. I can't. I have zero ability to act. You're gonna have to figure it out in editing and things of that nature. We need to hack it. <laughs> what what is kind of gone? What is non-debatable? My gut. Um, you know, I, I I've realized over the past few years, non-debatable is is my gut. You, right. You can't. You'd rather die no with matter, your sword, right? You, yes, exactly. Because okay. I have we hit. I say I. We have been wrong as as a group. Sure. Because I've gone against my gut, and I, I'm not saying that because I'm I'm not not right all the time. Absolutely not. Um, it just sucks. It just sucks. I, and, and I, I like losing on my terms absolutely. versus losing on somebody else's terms. It's devastating because you're like I knew it versus oh shit I suck. Exactly. I and suck you learn feels from amazing. It, right? You learn from it. Yeah. Um, I suck sounds amazing. Like Andy sucks feels like fuck Andy. <laughs> you know, like like you know what I mean. Like I get it. I exactly. Get it. So I mean, I, I take advice. You know. Music's so subjective. I mean, you know, I could like this song, you could hate it, and it could be a giant hit, right? Or it could be a giant tank. So that's it's tough when it comes to that stuff. Um, but career-wise, image-wise, I think my gut is what we always have to go with because it's me. Yeah, no, I get that. Who's next? Jacob. Jacob? You played in D.C.? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. D.C.'s cool. D.C.'s fun. Hello? Jacob, this is Gary Vaynerchuk, and you're on the Ask Gary V show. All right, great. Nice to see you, Gary. I see you both on the video screen right now. I love uh, it. This is a question. Yeah, this is a question for Dustin. Please. Um, I play a lot of music, and I'm I'm kind of want to bring it back to the performance side. Um, how do you best prepare for each song that you're about to sing? So I know that you have a lot of different emotions with each song. Uh, how do you get yourself ready to bring the most out of each song when you're when you're ready to go for it? Wow, that's a great question. It is good. Um, 
You know, in, in a live show, it really depends on what kind of show it is. If it's if it's a headlining set, I have more time to really maybe intro the song or interact with the fans between songs. If we're on um, like direct support right now with Brad Paisley, it's wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. I mean, we've got mm-hmm. to get through all of our hits or yeah. somebody's going to be pissed. So it's really down to the second. Um, but emotionally, how, how do I get into it, man? Um, it, it starts in the studio. It starts with this. I've learned the hard way. I'm never going to record another song I don't believe in or I haven't been through or felt or someone right. close to me has felt. And so, um, you know, when it comes to recording original music, it's all about that, you know, and it, but, but in a live sense, it's all about the connection, um, with the fans. And and that's something I don't think, you know, that's, that connection can't be felt, you know, through a live stream. It can't be felt through VR, which is where, you know, a lot of the world's going, you have to be in the moment. That's why people go to concerts. They want to feel a part of something. They want to be on that exactly. wavelength. And so, and to take the selfie to prove they were there. And to take the selfie, hell yeah. And so, man, it's it's all about that connection. It's and and for me, I'm always thinking twelve steps ahead of where I am on stage. Right? I'm always um, I'm always going. Okay, who do I need to sing this song to? Sometimes a song about getting it on is not the song you want to point out a 12 year old in the crowd. Right. So I'm kind of like you're clever with the words and nobody, and they don't realize it, but the parents do. And then everybody's laughing. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> so it really is, man. It's just, I will say this, it's repetition, dude. I've been, you know, um, and not a too long. I feeling you were going to say that. I, I totally hear you on that. Yeah. Not and J- what about you, Jacob? How do you do? Yeah. It? Tell us about you. What, what kind of music are you playing and where are you playing? Well, yeah, so I, I actually went to school for music, um, so I, I played uh, a lot of orchestra work, mm-hmm. um, but I, I play a lot of guitar now just to try to keep myself going. Um, I'm in the process of writing music right now, and I find it pretty challenging to, to find the inspiration of, of where a song comes from and who exactly am I, am I writing to, and, and is it approachable to everyone that I'm, that's going to listen, and I... And I kind of stop myself in my tracks quite a bit uh, because I, I'm, I kind of get into that perfectionist mode and I and I have a hard time. Oh yeah, man. Dude, Dustin, Dustin, I, I, was almost, gonna, I was gonna ask that, Paul. Go ahead, actually, finish your thought. I will say, um, this, is, this is two things here. Um, number one, if you have felt um, an emotion, if you have been through, we found Ann Baldwin. Oh my goodness. <laughs> if you, Jake, if you, if you have felt something, if you've been through something in life, um, Everyone, someone else has, right? I had to learn that, right? I mean, it's scary to go, is this dumb to sing about? Hell no. We all feel the same thing. We all go through the, we all share the same emotions. So everybody's been on that wavelength at some point in time. And, and the other thing, man, just keep pushing through it. it, I absolutely know where you're coming from on completing a song, right? You get it started, you get it started. Then you start second guessing. Who gives a crap? Um, It takes, still today, it takes me about a hundred songs to get a hit song. And, um, you know, that I've gotten a lot better. My, my averages have gotten a lot better over the years. Could you understand pattern recognition? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, now it's now for me, I've hit a point in my career where it's not about a hit song. It's about the right hit song. Um, but I would well, say, dude, it, the, the exercise, <laughs> the exercise is just finish it. Hey, Jacob, I, uh, yeah. I apologize, Justin, but I want to ask you this too, yeah. Dustin. Jacob, you said something interesting to me that I want to also clarify for everybody who's starting a startup or a business and music because sure. it's very universal. Both the second and third thing you said made me think that there was no chance you were going to win because you were spending too much time worrying about outside factors instead of inside factors, right? You said, you're, who's, go ahead. You're, to- you're totally right. And you know, and I, and I always right? have a, a backup plan and I, I kind of go right to that backup plan. Um, Can I ask you a weird question? Yeah. Like what's your sure. intuition? Maybe you have the answer, maybe you don't. What's your intuition to why does that part matter? The backup plan? Uh, that and like, who's gonna listen to this or who am I writing this for? Shouldn't you write for yourself? Like I always bring up this Drago in Rocky moment where he's mad at Russia and saying at the end of the movie, maybe because I understood what he was saying since I speak Russian, listen, <laughs> I'm in here fighting for myself. This isn't about Russia and America. Yahtzee, I'm doing it for myself. I'm in this ring for myself. That's how I've lived my professional life for sure and that's why I think I'm winning and I have a feeling that if I was a songwriter, if I'm just writing for myself, I've gotta let the serendipity, humans are, we have so many commonalities and I'm just 
wonder, like I just think it's a terrible idea to do anything that's being created of debating if this is for anybody else. Scratch your own itch, write it for yourself. The inspirations need to come from your life. And listen, not everybody has gone through divorce. Listen, there's some people that have never gone through heartbreak. Like, mm-hmm. like, 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 there's just a lot of people who marry their high school sweetheart. Like, it happens. Like, you can't manifest your experiences, but like, you can speak to your truths. And maybe it was, a, maybe you were so great at music at a young age. And maybe like, what about when you thought you were a prodigy, but in fourth grade you met Sally and she was even better? Like, there's just truths that are your truths. And I think writing about your, like, people always ask me, why am I good at speaking? Why am I good at improv? It's because I never deviate from anything other than my truth. When you're not talking about anything else, you're just, every single person I'm looking at, and there's a lot of us in this room today, like, everybody can tell me about them. And like, what happened? And like, why Seth got that tattoo? Like, it's very easy. Like, it's not super complicated. Jake can talk about his two brothers. It's his life. So like, I don't know, man. I really highly recommend that you just leave that at the table and just start just talk, doing, write it for yourself. Absolutely, yeah. What are your goals as a songwriter? You want to do, you know, it, you want to do um, it for fun? You want to make a living at it? It's it's always been in the back of my mind something that I would it was it was it's been a dream. It's always it always is my fallback. It's always something that I really I really wanted. It's that undercurrent. Um, I, I never seen it as something that I could make as my profession because it hasn't been yet. Um, so I do I you guess want it to be your profession? Maybe, I I mean in in a dream world that would that would be amazing. So what you just think you think it's not practical because your answer of it's it's I I I it's not going to happen because it hasn't happened yet is a forever cycle that you can't win. Well, and I realize that I'm in a cycle. I understand that. I think the main thing is creating content that is approachable to to a, an audience. Um, I, I think I think you're overthinking the business of music. Like every song that changed a generation was unapproachable until it was approachable. All right. Yeah. You're right? right. Like, like right now, yeah. every, like uh, you know, I like watching documentaries. I got some time. You know, you start looking at like what grunge was. Nobody was ready for grunge. Nobody was ready for gangster rap. Nobody was ready for EDM. Nobody was ready for anything. Like, who the hell thought in hip hop that kids that look like Urkel would be the most popular? Like, like, <laughs> like this is why I genuinely believe that if you just write it for, like, first of all, let's talk about a whole nother thing that Dustin didn't have to deal with, which is you literally can upload this to Spotify, Apple Music, like, you have literally, literally there is no middleman. Now look, nobody may find it, but literally this is how scary it is. All you need is the right one person to find it that can change your life. You, you literally have to write it, produce it, and post it. Like, it's incredible, all of you artists are so lucky. There's nobody stopping, there is no, thumbs down, no. we won't put this on a CD or a tape. There's upload it and go to sleep. Yeah. Like, you know how many videos have gone viral and made people hundreds of thousands of dollars of people who just uploaded a video on YouTube and then, well, it happened. Like, 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 I just genuinely believe you're so lucky, unlike your grandparents or great grandparents, you live in a world now where there's no friction between you and everybody who's watching this. Record the song, produce it, post it, go to sleep. That's it. That's it, man. Right. And the only thing that's stopping you is that you're pandering to what you think is, cons- when I hear consumable, then I know what's going through your mind and I'm trying out of my sheer will right now telling you like, fuck consumable, just write the song and produce the song and make the song that you wanna write and if nothing else, if nothing else, you can laugh about it 17 years from now be like, remember when I put out that funny, like, like what is the, what's the fundamental downside? There's no fail. There's absolutely no failure. Yeah. Like no if seven right people here. hear it, then nobody even knew what fucking happened, bro. <laughs> Great. Thank you, guys. You got it, man. Thanks, sir. You know what's interesting? You know what's really going through my mind? I'd love to get your perspective here, Dustin. Is uh, it's really interesting to me if you take just and we know, we don't know him, right. but you know, I was doing it through orchestra. My, like kids that grew up in a system where there was a teacher mm-hmm. who was the dictator of this is good and this is bad. Have it have often the cliche thing that we don't have where we were just in, like just slinging it right that which is they actually think there's somebody that's right. I don't think anybody's right. Right. Yeah. There you're spot on without a doubt. Yeah. I mean he uh that mm. that would be that would be more of um, me coming up through college and being told how to write a song. Especially if you heard the way he said it, like it seemed like he like like again I'm imposing a little bit of like what I thought I was picking up there, but like if you were good. 
early on and you're good at it, you're going through classes, you're trying to get a scholarship, you're, you know, like it's, there's a machine that's saying good and bad. What's amazing about it is there's a machine in the music industry, except once it hits the, the ears of the public, the machine has no leverage. Zero, the machine right. had leverage for distribution, which is now being taken away, mm-hmm. which is why this is the golden era of artists. Yeah, without a doubt. Who do we have? Nate from Columbus, Ohio. So Andy, while we're waiting for Nate, how do you feel when it's your fault? When it's my fault? <laughs> <laughs> this is Nate? It's Nate. It's Nate. Nate, what do you think is going on here? Is this the Ask Gary V show? It sure is, Nate, and you're on with Dustin. No way. <laughs> what's up, Dustin? How's it going, man? What's up, Nate? Man, I, I'm missing Columbus. That's what's up. I'm ready to get back there. That's right. Oh, wait. I O, brother. <laughs> all right, listen, this is all very nice about the swing state and the place where college football is huge, but let's get your question, Nate. Thanks, Gary. Uh, and first off, uh, thanks for everything you do, Gary. I really appreciate it, man. My pleasure. Uh, huge baller. Thank you. Um, so, Dustin, uh, the entertainment industry, I mean, it continues to change, man. Technology is emerging. Um, you know, live concerts, festivals currently make up a large portion of what entertainers bring home each year, right? Oh, without so, a doubt. how do you guys how do, how do you guys plan on maximizing, you know, those earnings as you're on tour and and uh, what creative ways do you guys have and your team have moving forward to to try to maximize that opportunity and, and all those fans on every festival you guys play at? Well, you know, um, I've been blessed enough to be on and introduced to millions of of fans um, because another act has believed in me. Um, it started with Keith Urban back in 2012. He could have, and I didn't know this, is how tours were booked. It's all the, the headliner goes. I like him or her. Why don't you come out on tour with me? And, and so Keith was the first guy to believe in me and take me out. So and, Keith, from a career standpoint, back to the narrative that I tried to set up in the beginning, just for everybody who's trying to get educated, do you feel like Keith kind of really put you on by giving you that opportunity? Oh, without a doubt, yeah. Um, I mean, an endorsement from Keith Urban is huge. Yeah. Because not only is it a thumbs up from him, confidence wise for me it's hey all of my fans check this new kid out and um you know we travel the the country how did keith's audience so obviously we all know you know concert dynamics how did the first couple shows go did was do you guys have styles that made them you know i've always been fascinated by this because you go to some concerts and like the opening acts like when you think about how they match to the main act i'm like that's interesting like how did that happen or why is that happening or the tough ones where like, there's been times where i've liked the opening act even more so like just because maybe it's somebody new but like you can tell like the audience is like wait a minute like we're here for this kind of style of music what is what's why is like in sync here for an nwa concert right like like <laughs> were, were your styles good matches that his audience and let's call it what it is his audience adapted to you quickly or was there some friction or how did that go well it's it's for me it's uh sitting back and going okay i have one hit song right there and this was at the time this is at the time i yeah. have one hit and i'm going i'm gonna play my hit i'm gonna play my hit <laughs> i wish i could play it three times but i can't but then it was honestly it was me going then it was me going okay out of my so many songs what do i think keith urban's crowd wants to hear and of what course. is keith urban's crowd and was your time, was your hit song a good match for keith's crew oh yeah yeah, okay. it was good. Um, it wasn't Keith, though. It, you know, he's rocking guitar, and my first hit was very classical sure. and different. Um, Did they know your song? It was a hit song for you. Oh, yeah. Was it, was it, was it? A, big, it okay. was a big one, yeah. Got it. Um, so it wasn't humbling where you're like, okay, I'm going to play my hit song, and you're like, oh, shit, nobody knows it. Now what? Okay, okay. But, now <laughs> yeah. but now it's not what. But, but then, you know, to get, to get back to your question, um, you know, going from Keith to then Luke Bryan and playing freaking football stadiums everywhere, um, yeah. I'm on this great – trend right now to and the goal is to be them right to get to that level um you know even even our even our big the biggest even cold play i mean your biggest beyonce everybody's playing the football stands in the states now what we haven't done is a country music genre and now that that, that streaming is taking over and, and the reach for country music is worldwide you ask how am i going to maximize and that's what i'm trying to figure out how can i get my butt into these markets where country has never existed. Can I ask you a question? Have you, how much have you thought about crossing over? How much have you thought about singing the hook on a hip hop song? How much have you thought about like being part of an ensemble in a Korean pop song or, or an EDM mix up? Like how much have you thought about that? A lot, without a doubt, yeah. And Cause that's the answer. 
That's that's like, that's the end. It's not super complicated. Like it's funny, we talk a lot about influencer marketing. Nothing we do is better than the collaboration, right? There are so many entrepreneurs from different parts of the world who this is their first interaction with you. We're gonna link up a bunch of your songs and they're gonna become fans. It's just not super complicated. Logic, who was already right. huge when I had him, the, the hip hop artist, mm-hmm. when he was on MTV Music Awards this, this late August and got a lot of you know exposure, the amount of people that hit me up and were like, you put me on to like, you know, crossing over whether in this kind of genre right. or whether in, in the classical bigger places here in New York, whether it's Good Morning America or Today Show, or the serendipity of having a hit in a different genre that you're a part of, that's the move. Yeah, and, and really music, I mean, country music is kind of, where's rock gone, right? It's it's kind of, um, the walls of genre are kind of coming down, um, you know. For sure. And that's so exciting for me. And uh, But, you know, for us, I mean, the, the, the reach that we have as a, as a village and a team, it's like, okay, crap. How do we put these people in place to, to now go and tour in these countries? And that's that's what we're trying to figure out to answer your question. So exciting cool. stuff for us. Hey, thanks so much for calling, bro. Uh, thanks so much, guys. Have a great day. Take, Take care. care. Let's do one more before we get out of here. Yeah, I mean, I think the collaboration thing is super fascinating to me. And, yeah, no, and no. What I, you know, it's really easy for the guy from DC that we talked to, Jacob, like, you know, saying, like, he'll do anything with anybody. My question for you, while, while Andy's pulling up one more, is when you get to the level of success that you have, do you have fear? Does the team have fear? Does the label have fear? Does the macro team have fear of doing something with an artist that represents something in a different world because there's the potential of, you know, the positioning not being right? Yeah, I mean, like, what doubt. stops you from doing as many collaborations as you can? Um, you know. Is it your own perfection of 100 songs being one song, like, feeling good? At, like, to me, that's what's interesting, right? Like, you know, I, I, I'm just so fascinated by the supply and demand of music right now. Like, right. so when you were talking, I, I didn't want to, I don't want to get yelled at for cutting off, so I'm trying to be better in my new season. Um, <laughs> uh, well, I'm like sitting here and being like, but what about those 99 songs? Right. Right? Like, the, you know, when I hear 101, I'm like, sure. but what about, like, like, I'm convinced that the biggest hit for everybody from the Beatles and Elvis to our dude in DC never saw the light of day. I'm fascinated by that. Yeah. Fascinated by that. And I think this is the era, you know, it's what I love about hip hop and the mixtape concept. I think that's something that the other genres in music really need to think about, especially with direct to streaming. And I don't know what your deal is with your, you know, like just getting stuff out there. Yeah, sure. Well, you know, we've seen, um, you know, Drake and, and those, uh, what did he put out on his last last round? Was it 20 or 23 or something like Drake's that? Drake's got a trillion songs. Uh, uh, he just, I think he just shits out whatever he writes, right? I agree. Um, and <laughs> and, and it, believe in it. I'm yeah, like, absolutely. I'm like wondering what's up with him right now because he hasn't put out like 40 songs in the last four minutes. <laughs> I'm like, well, Drake's vacationing. I'm like, going. I hope Drake's okay. <laughs> you know? He's bought another team or something. Yeah, yeah I get it. Exactly. No, but so, so like while... Andy, where, where, I'm, I'm, I'm this right. is one of those moments, right? Uh, um, <laughs> while we're pulling that up, like, do you have songs that you keep going, like, do you have songs sitting on the pad or however you write, like, that are close, that, like, you go back to 18 months later, and like, oh, oh wait. sure, yeah. Yeah, there's a song uh, on this new album that we, we tried and tried for six months to and get. And finally got it. And finally got it. And it's one of my favorites. But, um, yeah, it, 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 it happens all the time. A lot of times we give up, too. Well, that's right. Yeah. Who's this? Andrew. Andrew? Yeah. This is the Ask Gary V Show. How are you? I am doing fantastic. How are you? I'm doing super well. Do you have a question for Dustin or I? Absolutely. So uh, I've I've been kicking around some some different strategies. So my question is, I'm an I'm an economic development director in McCook, Nebraska, population about 7,600. And um, what what we're trying to do is really make rural America a relevant place for entrepreneurs and, and people to do business. And, and in a competitive market, you know, we're, we're on an international scale with, with the internet and, and trying to really make our mark in, in the business world today. So my, my question is, you know, rural America has some advantages with cheaper cost of living and, and some other advantages, but what are, what are some things that are attractive as an entrepreneur um, to do business in rural communities. So when you talked about uh, internet on an international scale, you're talking about the speed of your fiber and how fast your internet is? Yes, not necessarily in rural America because we're, yeah, no, we're just yeah. now getting to yeah. that. But, um, you know, being able to do business internationally, I mean, there's, 
there's someone down the street that, that probably sells purses to someone in China. Yeah, of course. So how, how, how do we make those, those so businesses? So you're, you're trying to figure out how to recruit entrepreneurs to move into your city. Yeah, so is it, is it recruitment or is it an organic process where I just have to breed entrepreneurs and yeah. they don't leave? Yeah, so they're gonna leave and that's what you're trying to stop, right? So let's break it down, right? So, for example, okay. Eb Williams, who is my number one favorite consumer internet entrepreneur, invented Blogger, was on the founding team of Twitter, invented Medium, literally my favorite internet entrepreneur. You know, Zucks and Bezos, I think, are better overall, but my favorite, because he's done it multiple times, Eb Williams, he's from Nebraska, right? So, like, they're gonna yeah. leave. I think, you know, but here's what's funny about entrepreneurs. They remind, they're very similar, they're, they're salespeople. Salespeople are the best. If a salesperson has a base salary and she or he has a big bonus based on everything, you could literally say anything. You could say, Sally, if you walk backwards in the desert screaming, you know, lyrics, that's how you get your bonus, she will do that. They just reverse engineer how to get their bonus. Same with entrepreneurs. The way smaller towns compete with San Francisco, New York, LA, is a couple ways. Number one, you get lucky as hell. You get a generational entrepreneur who's in love with your small town and she or he decides never to leave and they become the poster child that attracts others. That's super ridiculously hard, getting harder and harder. Number two, money. The amount of money that your city wastes on dumb shit that they could throw at entrepreneurs to subsidize their overhead or pay them a stipend is super simple. It's very basic, it's emotional to the taxpayers, but at a macroeconomic level, it works so often. So, AKA, you can bribe them. Like, you would not believe how quick I would open a VaynerMedia office in your town if you paid me $13 million right now. (laughs) Right, so I don't think you're throwing around $13 million, so there's different versions of that because you could have gotten a VaynerMedia office seven years ago for a million dollars and probably nine years ago for $44, right? So, <laughs> so there's that. Um, and then number three, you create some sort of narrative of whether it's quality, of, you, you, you flip the switch or the script. You find a narrative of like health benefits, uh, you know, the, 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 the quality of life. You go to the small percentage of hippiness that sits in an entrepreneur where, the, you know, where they wanna raise their children or, or, or some other kind of hook. It's all about hooks. It's, sure. The hook in a song, I'm sure you guys can probably explain much better than me, is pretty damn important Absolutely. and helps something become a hit. Yep. You're gonna, you know, entrepreneurs are gonna come to a very small town of 7,600 if it's financially viable or if you can pull at some emotional string and the way to do that is to reverse engineer the individual. If I worked with you, I would make a map of 250 obtainable entrepreneurs that we think are on the cusp of building a business and then I would figure out what makes them emotional and whether it's a donation to a charity where they lost their parents or whether it's the fact that they love some sort of comic book hero and we're the, like, you, I mean this is getting very granular, you basically pierce their emotional center and what I would call guilt or excite them into moving there. So it's either bribing or guilting. (laughs) <laughs> Dustin, thoughts? <laughs> um, second that. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me throw something else at you. One of the biggest mistakes that people make is they try to sell the unsellable. So when you make your target list of 250, you know, it might not be a good idea to try to reach out to Zucks and make Facebook open up shop. I, yep. think, I think being really, 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 really smart, Andrew, about who you target, um, looking for somebody who's just spiking, you know, running a lot of queries on Google, you know, trends and, or, or Google alerts on entrepreneurs that are winning. Uh, tr- you know, I would also do a lot of listening. I, I would ask you, what's the biggest university by you? Uh, university of Nebraska Lincoln is in Lincoln, that's about three and a half hours away and we have a local community college here. Got it, so I would highly, highly try to figure out how to hack Lincoln get a real presence there, get a surrogate, like really set up shop there and try to seduce some of the individuals there. But again, 
if I'm tweeting, can't wait to get to the big city, gonna fuck up the world, you shouldn't come to me because you got nothing for me. But if I'm talking about, mm-hmm. uh, you know, starting, if you note, if I'm on your radar because you know I have a small business and I tweeted a month ago getting homesick and you see that I came from a town of 506, that might be a good target. I am blown away by people's great ambitions. You're, you have a great ambition. You have, you have a small town, right? And you want to get great yeah. entrepreneurs to come to you in the face of Silicon Valley, New York City, and LA? That is a tough task. For you to do anything other than enormous amounts of homework to reverse engineer the three to five individuals that can do this for you would be a grave mistake and you have no chance. So these little details I'm giving you are really the fighting chance that you have. It has to be practical and obtainable. Got it. Make sense? Perfect. Absolutely. Thank Thank you for your time, guys. My pleasure. Take care. That was an interesting question. Dude, great answer. All right, Dust, what do you you (laughs) want to get across to the Vayner Nation before we get here? Obviously, new album, you're on on a promotion kick. Is it out? Is it about to be out? It comes out Friday. Um, and how, how many of this is for you now? This is the third one. And so like, is this like having a child? This is, you know, well, like, this this is, is like, you, they, but, they're all like, you love them all the same or do you like this one the best? I like or? this one the best. This is the, this it's is, the newest one and you gotta move, I love it, what a salesman. No, <laughs> not, not even. My, fit, my best book is uh, crushing it, coming out you know, January 30th, <laughs> the best book ever. You know what, no, I said it honestly because this is. Um, the one you had the most freedom to do your thing? That, yeah. and, and I'm confident now. I know, I know what I need to do. All right, let's play a fun little game. What's, what's going to be the breakout song? Like, what is going to be? What's going to be fun to look back at this? This is what they're not going to do on Good Morning America. Right. Let's get something good here. Come on. What's your gut tell you breakout hit of this album? So, or, is, or any? I assume a song or two is out, right? Yes, two songs are out. Two songs are gold. And do you feel like you guys try to push? Like, like is this a scenario where? Like, I'm fascinated by this in the music industry, where we t- a lot of people talk about streaming. They talk about this, but then still, at some level. You and your team sat down and said, okay, of these 13 songs, these two, right? Right, sure. And how did that happen? Did you feel like you had the pulse of what a hit is now that you're getting better? Yes. Or were they, the, oh, got it. Yeah, uh, which is the right that. Which is the right fucking answer. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and which, now, which one outside of those two would make you the happiest if it was a hit? Um, love me or leave me alone, love 100%. Me and and, and now you, you asked what would be the breakout hit. That's a song I believe that's gonna sell a lot of tickets. And that's the world I want. I want people to show up to shows. And so then, but then you intuitively understood that that was not a wider hit and that's why it wasn't one of the first two signals you released? Um, Is that the logic? It's very stripped down. It's very not country radio friendly because when I'm driving to work, I don't want to hear an emotional song about love love me or leave me alone. Yeah. But I want to go to this concert and dance with my girl. And so Do you that's, think it's the most truthful song? Oh yeah, for sure. So it's interesting. The reason I just asked that question and having this behind me makes it easier. It's so interesting to me that crushing it is gonna sell more. Like the fact that the thank you economy is the lowest selling book of my repertoire and it is disproportionately the truest and most important is fascinating to me. It's the closest I'll ever have to like having a record, you know, with like, I, I kind of can attach with you on that. The reason I asked you if it's the truest, that's the truest book I wrote but it's so fuck, it did its thing, but it's the absolute middle child of everything because it's the hardest to do. Nobody wants to hear bleed out of your eyeballs for the rest of your fucking life. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. but it, like anybody who follows that one other than the others would win and because it's just so true. Sure, yeah. You know what's really also interesting to me? Back to you putting out the other two as singles, it's the one I promoted the least, which is ultimately probably why, definitely why it performed differently. I was right. in the midst of really building Vayner Media and just didn't have the time or energy to make it go crazy. Um, that just whole thing's fascinating to me, and it's interesting that you went there with that. What's great about music and what's exciting though is I don't know what the hell's going to happen. What was the fourteenth song? Um, what was the song that was fourteen? What was the song that did not make this? album that you guys debated um gosh we I like the team's reaction because I'm like oh <laughs> shit what's really I'm like there's something good is he gonna tell us or damn it or are they gonna go in the cab and be like oh fuck it? Yeah. Like, yeah no there was there was a few that that um but the 14th but the 14th Dustin was the song, what was the 14th the, song I'll say this it was a song that I was really excited about and still am excited about another artist is gonna cut it I already know that um you wrote it no I did not write okay. it okay um but I was told it was to pop, and I found this hilarious. By who? By my label. 
right? Understand. Um, Do you secretly hope that becomes a massively huge hit so you can stick it to the label? Or are you scared shitless that it's gonna become a massive hit and you're gonna be like, motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> Which one of those two? You can only pick one. Well, Do you, this is an interesting question. This is actually the best moment of this episode. Okay. Are you A, I have secretly said. hoping that this song becomes the breakout hit of next year, or B, oh, which one was the other one? Or that it breaks a break, or, or, or is that, that scare, or does that scare the fuck out of you and you're gonna be depressed that there's massive song hit? I've never pulled for a song more. No, I want it to be a giant hit. You do? Absolutely. I fu- you're such a winner. Without I would've, a I would've doubt, bet my life me? that that's what you were gonna say. Absolutely. So that you could walk in and be like, motherfuckers, next time when I tell you, <laughs> I need to be able to put that song. Well, you know, I mean, that song, for, honestly though, I, I have to say, there are more in line that I, I believed in more than it, you know. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have let them cut it if I really was like, this "I see, is, we're gonna." You, this you is still the had freaking... a one to three percent of like, does this match the whole theme? You, you felt out as a standalone, it was a real hit, but as a complete thing, it might have been a slightly out of place. Like I said earlier, there's hits and there's the right hits for me now. There's hits I that see. are going to make people buy a ticket and come Like you're scared show. to have like the Humpty Dance be your hit. Like, like you gotta be careful <laughs> to make sure you don't have a hit that then changes everything else, right? Absolutely, yeah. But you know what, that's actually really interesting to me. I wonder how many people that are either one hit wonders or are really hard, like very passionate about their craft and had a hit that's slightly out of their zone that so changed their careers that they were never able to recover in some way, shape, or form, because it position that, right? It's like the Tony Soprano or the Fonzie, like sure. you have that thing that happens that's so deeply associated with you, you're fucking stuck to ever break out of there's that. A, there's a few of those artists, yeah. Absolutely. Well, I'm sure, I'm just curious, like who's like, who? I mean, in the country What's world. that? Smash Mouth, the song in Shrek, that's the only popular one people know. Right, and, and is hey, that you... song super different than everything else they make? I don't know about that. See, that's the question, right? Got it. See, like to me, then if you ask Smash Mouth, like it was like, like I'm curious, like who had a song that was slightly, and I'm not saying you're necessarily saying that about it's only 14, but slightly out of the realm. It goes batshit crazy. Everybody thinks that's them, and then that, and then that's it. Either them as band or that person as individual. Yeah. They're kind. Of, I'm curious who that really. Does anybody know? I mean, who back in the Call Me Maybe Girl, I feel like the rest Ca- Carly Ray. Carly Jepsen, right? right? That was one achy breaky heart for uh, Billy Ray Cyrus. You know, was Interesting. the biggest song on earth and ever. You know, he had to go reinvent himself for ten years. Interesting. Um, yeah, Carly Rae Jepsen, nice dude. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think that's I a thing, that's no doubt. Even if Dustin's giving you daps, I'm not positive that's true. <laughs> well, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what the audience has to say. The market will dictate if you're there right, Simone, exactly. or not. Dustin, this is a real pleasure, dude, man. Thank you so much. So this no, Friday. Yeah. Album drops. This Friday, Kermode's coming right? out. But people yeah. can get it already now, like uh, like yeah, an app get it, things go like that. Go ahead and order it, and there's already uh, you know the instant grat tracks yep. that are out. Um, yep. Yeah. So we're, uh, we're congratulations, excited. my friend. I'm thrilled. Really thank you on. so much. Thanks for having me on. As you may know, since you follow some of the content, but I'm not sure, sure. you get to ask the question of the day. Oh, I do, so yeah. so what question would you like to ask the masses? Um, you already kind of answered this. Okay. So now they get but, to. But but now you guys get to comment, and and hopefully we have some folks internationally watching. How do I throw gas? on the international flame of my career. Like how do I get so how do I get how do I get to where I can sell out a show in Brazil? How do I get to where I can sell out a show in Manila? Go. It's super interesting. Sid on my team, we are like spending some serious time internationally right now as well. It's uh it's super interesting, right? Like yeah. you kind of spend your whole life trying to win on this massive stage. Right. You get some love, it gets going a little bit. You know, I'm sure we both have plenty more we want to do in the US. Sure. But then you're like, wait a minute. There's a big fucking world out Huge. there. Yeah, and Absolutely. now the way the web works. So yeah. I appreciate it, my man. Dude, thank Thanks you. for being on the Absolutely. show. You keep asking questions, we'll keep answering them.